Hi everybody, um, for this week's Wednesday Wisdom I want to chat a little bit about pressure. I would love to say I volunteered for it but it's more realistic to say I was assigned it um, because anybody who knows me knows that one of my mottos or catchphrases in life is um, diamonds are made under pressure. Uh, to be honest that's always been a bit of an excuse for procrastination but here we are. For me anyway, um, this is going to be a very different type of message. Uh, normally when I get a topic, I will research it a lot, see what other people have to say about it and then kind of use that as inspiration. But this one is just kind of 100% from my own heart. It's been from like self-motivated learning that I have done myself um, with direct teachable moments from the Bible and what I feel God is directing me to say. So with that in mind, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully for some it is. Um, and if not right now, maybe someday in the future. Um, so let's get started. <clears throat> so pressure is something I guarantee everybody's been through in their life um, or will do at some point. It may have just been a passing moment or something that has stayed with us for a long period of time. Uh, for me, I have felt pressure, I would say, most of my life. And I know some people are watching this and thinking, Robin, you're only 24. What the flip have you had to be stressed or pressured about? And you know what, like, that is very true. Um, I have been very blessed with my life. And I know there are people out there who have been through much worse. Um, but for me, pressure has come in a lot of different forms. Um, peer pressure, pressure from my family. Um, but biggest of all, pressure from myself. Uh, I have been alive for 24 years. And 20 of those years have been in the education system. And that's 20 years of being told to just do your best. Um, but no one ever told you what to do if you felt like your best wasn't good enough. And I'm not comparing finger painting in P2 to your A-levels, but it is all relative. You know, at that time in your life, that is the most high pressure situation you have ever experienced. Um, and you want to make that the best painting you have ever give and to give to your parents um, or to get a good job stamp from your teacher. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. Uh, when you turn eight or nine, uh, you start to prepare for the AQE or the transfer test as it was in my day. Um, from that age on, every year in school is based on academic pressure to do well in exams, homework and coursework because it determines which school you get into, what GCSEs you can do, what A-levels you can do, then what university you can get into, what degree you can do, to then what job you can do and then how high up in that job you can get and that is a long time to feel that way and a long time for that pressure to build and build and build as the stakes seemingly get higher um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie I don't deal with pressure very well and um, even writing this I can my hands are shaking I'm, I'm shaking talking about this now but that's just the joys of having anxiety disorder but anyway uh, because of that I have really really had to apply my faith um, and put a lot of work into trying to get better at it so how do we cope? Um, my understanding, well, my own experience of pressure um, is mostly this desire or strive for a certain outcome. Um, and it's that word outcome that is quite key. Um, you can work your socks off to get the grades, to get the job, to get the promotion, to look good for others, to hold all your relationships together. But the reality is we're not in control of our own outcomes. And when you first hear that, that's incredibly scary um, and daunting. But in actual fact, it's something to take great comfort in. Um, general coping mechanisms are something you can just recite straight off a Google search. Do you know, exercise, to-do lists, mindfulness, good sleep hygiene, and they're, they are all great and I would recommend them. But one thing that has helped me the most has been God and my faith in him. Uh, since the pandemic hit, my job has been verging on unbearable and I'm not exaggerating um, I wasn't sleeping I was getting palpitations and I was in five four most of the time like I feel so sorry for my family but anyway um <clears throat> it would have been a lot lot worse had we have not been prepared for it so before Covid even hit Northern Ireland we had bulk bought months worth of things that we needed and we had this giant big wall built and just sitting ready to be installed should the unthinkable have happened um, it was really really scary um, but similarly to that we can't just wait for something to hit our lives and then try and deal with it obviously there are exceptions to that but for the most part we should be prepared for when the time comes and that we have a bit of a head start you know 
a lot of people make the mistake of thinking Christians they're exempt or they, d they don't face hard times you know that's not part of the faith but they couldn't be more wrong it just means as Christians we have a God to help us through it um, and there's been numerous times in my life I've reflected back and I say I don't understand how I would have got through that if it hadn't have been for my faith Um, so read your bible pray build a great support group with Christian friends so when those hard times come you're ready to face it Back in July, I filled out a wee Bible study here in a Bible study journal um, based on Psalm 33 and about the steadfast love of God. And hopefully this provides some context what I'm trying to get across. So please pause this video or at the end, go back and read Psalm 33. Um, it's very, very short, it won't take you very long. So these are just some of the main things uh, that I have taken from it. And I'm just gonna read some highlights um, to you. So from verses six to nine, it says, by the word, of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap, he puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him, for he spoke and it came to be. This really just shows us how powerful our God actually is, you know, with such little effort as a breath or a word, so much was created, um, so much so that we should just be in awe of him. Uh, he simply spoke and it came to be. It then tells us in verse 10, uh, he frustrates the plans of the peoples. Um, this reminds me not to rely on ourselves and we shouldn't be foolish enough to think that our lives are our own and we live by our own rules and responsible for our own outcomes. You know, no one saw this pandemic coming in December 31st, 2019 as they counted down and um, excited for a new year with new opportunities. But God did, and even amongst all this chaos and unimaginable pressure, when no one knows what the future will be or the outcome will be, he still has our backs. It tells us that in verse 14 when it says, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. And lastly, verses 20 to 21 tell us he is our help and our shield because we trust in his holy name. You see, the funny thing is, God is in control and um, everything we do fits right into his plan and we should be doing everything in life in his name and to glorify him and see all that pressure other people are putting on you or you're even putting on yourself that's completely irrelevant in God's eyes he will always love you regardless if we disappoint him you don't need a UCAS application or an excellent CV to get into heaven just love trust and accept God as your saviour that is the ultimate outcome and I would argue it's the simplest. So bringing us back, yes diamonds are made under pressure but in the right environment. If the environment is wrong you get coal. So what will your environment be? Is it where you block God and the church out and try to do life all by yourself and follow your own path? Or is it an environment where God and your soul can thrive with constant guidance and someone to rely on to help you through the most high pressure times? Don't forget, the Lord says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. How encouraging is that in this current climate? Like There is no need to stress. God's got this. And if God is for us, who can be against us?